Wow. I, it feels so long ago that Survivor happened, the penultimate episode. I feel like so much has happened since then. And South Africa, we've had a hectic week and um, I feel exhausted after the week. Um, lots of conversations about women in South Africa that it's even difficult to talk about. I, the, anyway, this is not a political or a uh, commentary kind of conversation to have, but um, <clears throat> yeah, to say that uh, we've had a tough week in South Africa is an understatement. And I think the episode, the penultimate episode of Survivor that we saw this week was fireworks from, from the get-go. And um, yeah, we all know that ultimately it was a big episode um yeah at the end of last episode you know Doral sort of having the blindfold lifted off <clears throat> I don't know and I think that Doral has been playing everybody um this idea that he was clueless about what was happening and him and um Mike sort of being uh having the blindfold lifted off the previous episode I think that that was Mike hearing about things for the first time but Doral, I think, is pretty much playing beautiful role for an Oscar. And, um, yeah, it's, a, it's an incredible journey that he's had. And if you think about has been involved in upsetting almost every single plan that anybody has ever made. They've tried to make it with Doral. And he's been the snitch the whole time. <clears throat> if Doral makes it to final three... Um, does he have a game to talk about? Does he have, it might not look like a game that you and I both like. He might not have a game that has one other people survivor, but he certainly has been involved in so many storylines that it's hard to, it's hard to argue that he doesn't have something to say at final tribal council if he makes it to final tribal, uh, final three. So for me, Doral he looks like a blundering idiot. He's been the downfall of, of a lot of people's games. But he's been there. He's still there. And he's outlasting. Will he be able to outwit and outplay and ultimately give the jury what they're looking for? And that would be to own his own moves. And to say, you know what, my strategy was to go and to thaw as many pla plans as possible and get as far as I can. I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. You know, there are a lot of theories about who's going to win, that it's just Rob's game to, to win right now. But this is Survivor. Um, anything can happen. Uh, there was um, some interest around what would happen final three. Um, would there be a fire-making challenge? No, right? So I had coffee with uh, LaRue um, this week, right after the episode. One of the things he told me was that that final advantage in the game that vote nullifier is so that we can avoid a fire making challenge because as i've mentioned many times before this show specifically is made by people who love survivor they are fans of the game but not only that they're part of the community so they read all of the reddit threads they they are watching absolutely everything um so yeah i don't have a massive concern um about fire making because it's not going to happen. Larue's told me that much. So that vote nullifier, we're going to get there. Because even me, I don't know what's going to happen. <clears throat> so the episode for me was kind of a background to Tribal Council. But let's let's talk about it anyway. Um, you know, there, are, there is talk about the grannies and the beauty queens. Um, and for me, I think that for everybody involved, that that is probably the best plan. For Nicole and Steffi to go to the end with Letitia, I think um, Steffi thinks that that is her best plan. I don't know if Steffi can win against anybody, perhaps Doral. Um, mm -hmm. The jury seemed to dislike her so much. Um, and I think for Nicole, her biggest chance of winning is to not go up against Rob. And so I guess she could win against anybody if, as long as it's not Rob. Maybe. I don't know if the jury dislikes her as much as you and I do. And again, you and I have seen a side of the game that the players have not. Um, 
it's so difficult to call, right? Um, but that reward challenge is a classic and a throwback to um, a survivor that happened in Samoa. And um, it is one where I watched an American survivor that was really hectic. Um, the weather was incredibly hectic and a lot of people fainted. So that challenge could go on for ages and it could be hectic. And because you are staring up literally at the sun, looking at the goblet in the sky, it can be exceptionally difficult to do. Um, but again, we saw Rob come out tops and win that challenge. So that was the big moment, right? If Rob won, lost there and they were able to convince him to go to the tribal council and not play his idol, they may have had a chance. But he was still safe because he had sitting an idol in his pocket. We'll talk about what he does with that idol in a bit. Um, for me, the interesting part is finally, um, Rob gives Letitia the opportunity to go to Islands of Secrets. And on Islands of Secrets, she gets that vote nullifier which means that in the next round, she can cancel somebody's vote. Really interesting to see what's going to happen there. Um, and Rob takes Nicole on the reward. Um, they get to go to this island and watch creepy bats fly around and eat hot dogs and eat fries and drink beer. Um, and I don't know whether that moment where Rob says that he doesn't mind if he loses the game, that he's played well and he's done everything that he wanted to do, was Rob having too many beers? But it's hard for me to ignore that that is somewhere in them. You know, people say that uh, you speak the truth when you're drunk. So I don't know if that's his honest opinion or if he's going to come out guns blazing and we've just seen, I don't know, foreshadow. I don't know what that means, but he has had a lot to drink when he does that. I'm going to get to your comments and questions because they're flying in and I'm going to run out of time to, to get to all of them. Um, this episode for me, if we didn't already know it, shows us how hard Nicole is playing. And again, I have never been a fan of Nicole, but we cannot applaud Rob without applauding Nicole. That, people, is what we call sexism. And yes, Nicole has done some things and said some things that make our skin crawl and for her acting like a snake. But Rob has done exactly the same things. Maybe he didn't fake cry after lying about phoning his parents. But please can we acknowledge that if we are applauding Rob for a game well played, we have to applaud Nicole. They have played very, very similar games. And to ignore one and applaud the other, you have to ask yourself why. Why are we holding Nicole to a certain standard and Rob to another standard? That is what is expected of women. So men can play dirty, men can lie and do all these things, but it's not expected of women. For me, the problem is that we remember that she's a Mrs. South Africa and we, we hold that up to a certain standard. And that's wrong, right? Somebody's gone into a game and she has gone out to play. That's exactly what she has done. In fact, I actually think that she has played a smarter and better game and a more socially dynamic game than Rob. I said it. I think Nicole's game is incredible. Does it make my stomach turn? Yes. Is it a game that I could play? I don't even think I'm anywhere as good at deceiving people and stringing people along as Nicole. But we have to admit that she has done really, really well. Okay, so let's quickly get to some of these ridiculous stream of things coming in. Let's get going. Um, yay. <laughs> Badil, yes, you are on time. You have been uh, looking forward to this for a while. Um, I'm going to tell you what I did this afternoon a bit later um, and who I was with. Um, maybe I won't tell you everybody that I was with, but um, to Laura, who came out to join us out at Dwaskes Boss. Um, Dwaskes Boss, excuse me. Um, yeah. Uh, Loudmouth says, do you think Dural will be able to state a case well enough for tribal council? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Um, I don't think the jury take him seriously enough uh, when he speaks. Their response mm -hmm. to him is not right, in my opinion. So I don't think he's going to be able 
But maybe he's playing us all. Maybe he's playing us all. I don't know. If it wasn't for the Rob, Rob would have been gone. Mm-hmm. Rob would have been gone. Nicole probably would have been gone. Steffi definitely would have been gone. People like Mike and Jacques have had their game completely blown up by Doral and and um, Dante. So Meryl also was, I think, a, a victim of Doral. So Doral has managed to basically expose almost every single plan that there was to get out any of the solar members. And it's interesting because I'm not sure if the jury know that. The jury also seemed to be like, wait, who is lying and who is doing what? And when the, when the moment when Mike sort of had a come to Jesus moment, as I like to call it, um, the jury will also seem like, oh, flip. It seems as if Rob is making all the calls and, and Nicole. And as soon as you walk out the game, you're like, oh, flip, I've been played. And I don't, I don't know to what degree they all are aware. We have the comfort of watching it from home. We are seeing confessionals. We are seeing behind the scenes. We are seeing stuff that they are not privy to. So it's very difficult and fascinating to me whether the jury make a decision to give somebody a million rand, whether they would still make that decision after watching the episodes. I don't think so. I think that that might have changed. So it's very interesting to see what's going on. Um, Was everything Nicole said in this episode the most cringe things in Survivor history? I don't think so. Um, They were cringeworthy. Um, the entitlement and hypocrisy um, are off the charts, but so is it with with Rob, and so is it with Steffi. There are moments that are so cringeworthy, and I know that Steffi is cringing. I know that she's looking at the game going, oh my God, how hectic, how ridiculous, how was I... It's, it must be very cringy. When I spoke to Mike after he got voted out, I said to him, listen, dude, this must be most, most cringeworthy thing to have gone through. To watch your game from the couch. Watch yourself make blunder after blunder and put your trust into people. And just just butcher your game. And I've spoken to a bunch of people who played this uh, season. And they said that Mike had so much potential, but he didn't live up to it. So that's massively disappointing. For him and for us as viewers. Because I think we all we all want to cheer for nice guys. And that's why we have a hard time supporting Nicole. Um... It's it's really interesting. Um, Mario says, yay to no fire. What's your take on Rob apparently wanting um, it to turn down the money on Soul Survivor at the end? Did it come out of his mouth saying he only wanted to play the game? And if he wins, he will turn it down? I don't know if he'll turn it down. Um, again, remember, he's had a lot of beer at that moment. So I don't know if that is the ramblings of a drunk man. Coming from somebody who's had a bit of gin and then loose lip string ships. I would have said those things even if I hadn't had gin, probably, because I'm not very good at holding my tongue. Um, However, I'm not sure that that was 100% his truth at that moment. I do think he had had a lot of beer. That's what Luru told me. So, um, I'm not sure. Um, Terrence says, I think he can argue his case well. Um, He might surprise us. You never know. Listen, Tom was Tom one survivor, so who knows. Um, Fadil Baker, you have loved Nicole for a while, so... Um, good honor if you back that horse right to the end well done on calling that um, my take says loudmouth if Rob doesn't lose the will to win he has the best chance followed by Letitia Durrell and then Nicole <whistles> despite Nicole being one of the better players that's very interesting I don't know if that's the response from the jury I don't think the jury are going to give a million rand and the, and the title and for me a lot of the players left in the game are not playing for the money they are playing to win I think they would have a hard time giving the money to Letitia or Doral. That is my personal opinion. I'm not sure if it's true. Maybe if they all come out batting and they say, this is what I did, this is how I voted this person out. If they own every single move that they've made, perhaps, perhaps, we will see. Um, Mario says, I I must say, not a huge Nicole fan and probably not the best chance to get Rob out mm-hmm. in the future, realize that she's in the bottom of the female line, so she played the game. Yeah, I think Nicole uh, wholeheartedly believed that she would have taken Ste- uh, Steffi and, and Letitia. And then she wholeheartedly believed if Rob won immunity and that wasn't going to be real, she would wholeheartedly go with Rob. And I'm not sure who her second option is, Doral or Letitia. I'm assuming probably Letitia. I don't know, though. So for me, she 100% was committed, and I'll tell you what she was committed to, herself, 
getting further in the game. She doesn't care about anybody sitting next to her. Nicole is in this game for Nicole. And you have to applaud her sole focus in this game. She has not lost that focus one little bit. Uh, so, yeah, she is all about... She was never about a certain alliance over another alliance. She was about Nicole getting to the end. Um, we cannot applaud without uh, applauding Nicole. 100% true. Um, Nicole is playing it may be dirty, but it's survival. 100%. And we seem to hold um, some people to a different game. Tribal reminded me of your season where Vanna turned on Katinka after Tom ratted her out. Not comparing you to Doral, though. Thank you. Um, although I do see a little bit of my game in Doral. I see a little bit of my game in, in Letitia. This week, especially when she was at that challenge, man. That reward challenge gave me so many feels about my raw, uh, my, the immunity with that maze and Letitia being so far behind everybody. I was like, come on, Letitia, you can do this. And I kept expecting Nico to say, if Jean could do it, you could do it. Um, but however, that puzzle for me wasn't as difficult, um, or maybe it was, uh, but everybody seemed to be on even playing fields with that one, as opposed to the one I did, um, when nobody had figured out what was going on. Um, Viscous, your lekker ding. Yeah, I was after Viscous this uh, today. Durao's a nice guy, but I've not seen him do anything brave and courageous. This is from Sheldon. Um, same for Nathan. He wanted to leave so many times. Nicole should have been buttering up those male jurors. Yeah, I don't know whether the people still in the game give any toss about the people in the jury, and that is so interesting for me. Those are the people whose decisions. I feel like Nicole recently is actually up to jury play um whereas the rest of them don't seem to give a shit about what's happening on the jury uh i think rob is playing all he is <laughs> larue confirms that uh rob had a lot of beer um when he was doing that um confessional so yeah someone mentioned to me that maybe nicole can't play well with females because of her history with competing with other women in pageantry your take sheldon did you not bring this up before or because for some reason i also um have that as a something that is in the back of my mind i can't say yes or no i don't know her personally i don't know the pageantry world at all um taryn can probably tell you more about that she's a massive follower of that um but i don't i can't say but she doesn't seem to do well with anybody coming up against her and i think in any kind of environment nicole is focused and she is going to win at all costs so it's i i I would say survivor, climbing mountains, pageantry, whatever it is, Nicole is going to come for you because um, she wants to be number one. And that's, that's, that's all I can give you insight to her. I don't know her. I can't, I don't know her frame of mind. Uh, she's, a, she's an anomaly to me. She is a hardcore narcissist. <laughs> she is out for number one only. Um, LaRue said, everything said in confessionals are said to inform the audience, 100%. That's from LaRue, right? So the jury sitting on the panel there, they don't have the full story. They may, bless you, they may um, they may get a bit of um, the insights as to what may have taken place. Um, they get what's happening on the jury, but they certainly don't get the full story. Um, so for them to make a decision on the island in February, March, uh, and now watching it back, I wonder how much like buyer's remorse there might be for seeing what has happened on the island. I don't know. Um, Jacques says, I think you can say with who you was. <laughs> Long time no see, Dante. Uh, yes, I was out with Jacques and Dante today. To say that we have spoken a lot about Survivor is a complete understatement. I've been with Jacques since 11 o'clock this morning. Um, I've just gotten back it uh, got back at like hopper seven and we spoke survivor non-stop um it was a lot of survivor and here i am speaking for survivor another hour, hour so there we go um what else have we got here i'll get to the questions that were posted earlier um did you not enter Miss world loudmouth no i did not i thought i had as much chance of winning that uh challenge where i made that comment as i did miss world so i was never intending to enter miss world and lord help me if i ever had to go up against stacy or nicole mm -mm. no thanks um i love nicole's strategic game a lot but how 
she rationalizes the decisions she makes is so frustrating excellent tv character i wholeheartedly agree and again nicole's rationaliz rationalization excuse me while i wrap myself around that word nicole rationalizes things how she's going to get to the end that's that's her only concern nicole was never there to make friends um, I probably think that she's probably texting people saying, I'm really sorry for that move. I'm really sorry. Trying to mend bridges and trying to validate the decisions that she's made. However, you, if you're on the opposite end of those moves, you're not going to want to know any of that business. Um, yeah, Lara Duplessis, you missed out on Columbine Coffee. We went out to Dante's place up the West Coast. If you want an amazing cup of coffee and you're in the area, drop in he's a lacquer guy um nicole is so good so strategic she has uh she has even had her number one competitor to say she must win uh yeah thanks melissa it's it's fascinating to me that everybody who has played with her has been like none of them are saying anything bad about her it's only now that they're watching the rest of it that they're figuring out hold on this chick is hardcore um and again, we're holding Nicole and Rob to two different standards. And I think we need to look at why. Um, Bianca CM says, if the end three are Nicole, Dural, and Letitia, I 100% th think the jury will vote for Dural. I don't think so. I don't think the jury respect Dural at all. I honestly think that they will give it to somebody who has played the game. Now, for me, that is problematic because it all depends on how you view the game being played. What does that mean? Outward, outplay, outlast. What does that mean to Jacques? What does that mean to Mike? What does that mean to Jeff? What does that mean to Meryl? What does that mean to Sipe or Maba? What that means to you will be what you're looking for in the answers from the jury. It's going to be a explosive, explosive final tribal council. So we are going to have next week, what's going to happen is we'll have the final episode. We see one more person get voted out. How do we know what's going to happen? It's going to be an immunity challenge. And you see a little bit of it in the throw forward to the next episode. I won't ruin it for you if you haven't seen that. But it's going to be one that is a leveler. Anybody can win it. And I think those challenges lend themselves to Nicole winning. I think Nicole has the best shot because of mentally where she is and how focused she is on Nicole getting to the end. I don't think there's going to be much standing between Nicole and that immunity necklace. A lot of people will think that Rob has got that necklace tied up. And if Rob loses, I think he's going home. Nicole knows that that is the biggest competitor that she has to go up against in the end. For her to take Letitia or Doral for me, would be her best option at winning. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Miss Coco SA Chanel says, I hope to God she doesn't win. Um, yeah, I think she's going to win, guys. They do say in the clips on the website they won't give the money to Letitia, and I think they absolutely despise Nicole. But they can despise Nicole, but can they recognize and can she verbalize the game that she's played and get their votes? Because that's what they're looking for. They don't have to like her, but if they if she can own the game that she's played, she may be able to convince people to write her name down and give her the vote. I feel like Ma Letitia has a better game than Doral, and this is coming from someone who had Letitia as their least favorite at the start. She defied the odds. Yeah, listen, she is like a bad rice. She did not go away, and she had many opportunities to quit. Um, a lot of people did give up this game. They said, please vote me out. Um... So I think Letitia has done exceptionally well. In that last challenge, I was very, very proud of her. She did not stop running. Let me tell you what your body and your mind and your emotions feel like at the end. Toffee. You cannot think. You cannot think logically. I was chatting to Jacques today and he was saying that um, they were trying to figure out how much rice they needed to get them to the end. And they were doing handfuls of rice. And they had five, or oh, whenever Jacques went out, four top five, top six. He went out at six. And they were trying to figure out how much rice they needed to get right to the end. And Jacques is like very brainy with maths. He's an engineer. He could do maths like that. 
he said he could not figure out. It took them two or three days to figure it out. That is how difficult it is to string simple thoughts together. Think about that. Now you get to the end, you've got this physical challenge. You've now got to do a puzzle. Things don't match up. You're so paranoid about what's happening. Who's doing what? Who's with who? Who's not doing stuff? And then Nicole comes with her logic. We got to do this. This is what Steffi said. This is the reason I told Letitia about this. Absolutely flawless, flawless execution with Rob. It may seem like a snake, but she did what she had to do to get rid of her biggest challenge threat. So one of the reasons Nicole got rid of Steffi is because Steffi may stand between her and winning immunity necklace. Steffi's been very strong at challenges. Not as strong as Rob, but if it comes down to a challenge where there's a puzzle or it's an uh, endurance one, Steffi also is a strong, strong challenge threat. She doesn't want Rob and Steffi. She's got to choose between one of the two. Also going up against the end. I think that maybe Steffi might have been a more difficult beat than somebody like Letitia for Nicole. I don't know. Um, your take on the idol play. Was it stupid for Rob to play it on Nicole and Nicole on Doral? I felt like Rob may lose loyalty points and Doral's vote if Doral does, does not make it to final three. It didn't really matter who played on who. The fact that Doral was saved. Doral also thought that somehow he may have been responsible for that. He was like, I voted Steffi. I came to Rob and I tried to save myself. And Rob's like inside joke was like, remember how we always talk about voting Nick Steffi? Um, do that one more time. Doral probably convinced himself that that was why he was saved. Because of that conversation. Not because Rob was throwing him a bone. That whole tribal sequence was just fascinating to watch. Again, that entitlement, that hypocrisy, uh, that now Nicole is throwing Steffi under the bus for turning on the Amigos. But Nicole turned on the Amigos a long time ago, voted Nathan out, and then was 100% in on the plan to vote out Rob. So, ee, man, she just chose the narrative which suited her best and sold it like her life depended on it so we we can't we can't we can't come for her looks like the jury is up for people uh up to looks like the jury is up to for people like rob and nicole in mike's ponderosa he mentioned to the jury we have to admit we have been outplayed by a titan of the game referring to rob yeah if rob goes all the way he is probably best to win nicole has the best shot to win the final immunity um her USA counterpart. I don't know what that says. Um, wouldn't mind Letitia win, but Nicole is the queen. Listen, I won't be upset. If Tani Letitia wins a million rand and Survivor, come on, guys. None of us can be upset. That is that is a pretty cool storyline, that that Tani from day one who's voted like the weakest. There she is. He's sick. Um, even if you're a snake, that's her game, 100%. And we've, we've applauded a lot of people for playing that way before. So why are we now holding Nicole to a different standard? It's interesting. And I, I am guilty of the same thing. I've come for Nicole many times. Um, but we do have to admit that she has played really strong. Um, this is probably the most people on Survivor Live since the start of Survivor 27, 100%. Um, and that's why this, um, uh, why this thing is going... Do you, quick question from LaRue. Do you think the vote nullifier is too big of an advantage in final four if it takes away the fire making challenge? Is it too much? In the hands of Letitia, I don't think it's too much. Um, I don't, I, I honestly can't tell what's going to happen. Um, and so for me, that's a great advantage. Um, maybe if there wasn't that thing there we went down to a fire making challenge we know rob would win that um and perhaps apparently Doral's never made a fire at all in camp so i'm not sure how well he would do i don't know but for me i i enjoy the freshness of the vote nullifier we've never seen that before um and seeing it at that point in the game as well is very fresh and i like again how islands of secrets has played a part in the narrative of the game and it hasn't been too much of an interference um Jacques today and I were talking about the islands of secrets and if we had to see that come back what we would like to see and for him he said 
that he would like to see more choices having to be made. So if you chose the vote nullifier or if you chose the package that could have something that could impact your game and something else, that that enticement would be interesting to see how people would rationalize the decisions that they make on Islands of Secrets. So although we are getting really cool narratives from Islands of Secrets, it would be nice to see um, more of a choice, like a Sophie's choice, a moral dilemma um, on Islands of Secrets, but that's uh, Jacques' opinion. Um, the vote nullifier is a bit boring for Final Four, but a fire-making challenge would make us so angry. Yeah, if it provides a major upset, says Graham, who's a previous winner, by the way, then no. I'm excited for the vote nullifier, says Lara. LaRue, if Rob got it, yes. Guys are really heartbroken for Steffi. It felt so ugly. Yay, guys, that Steffi was apparently inconsolable when she got off the island. Um, I forgot Nathan played. <laughs> guys, guys. I also have a question to ask you in a couple once I get to the bottom of this bloody thread. Jeez, guys, take it easy, please. Um, uh, all right, let's quickly vote, wrap this up. Um... Loudmouth says the most frustrating thing for this episode, they return from immunity and he sits back doing nothing. Play your powerless idol. Pull a Letitia in a vote against Letitia. Right. So I have information about that idol and we will get more information about it at final tribal council. But Dural actually doesn't have that idol anymore. Hmm. There is apparently a full story around what happened to it. I've been asking the whole season, where is that idol? It holds so much power. But who on earth, Dural can't play that idol. He doesn't understand the logics of this game enough to play the idol. So where is it? We will find more at the uh, reunion. I believe Dural did nothing with the fake idol. He, he gave it to somebody who could actually have done something with it. Like Survivor Rob from USA was one of the biggest snakes and everybody applauded him 100%. I, again, we need to ask why we're not applauding Nicole. Um, Islands of Secrets were a brilliant contribution to, you, to the game. Uh, I agree. Um, Graham says, you think jury being kind of hypocritical judging people in the game when they were beaten by the Amigos plus the Tisha. Rob eliminated the threat when he saw it. Can't fault him. Give that man a bulge and a million rand. I 100% agree. If Rob makes it to the end, 100% give him a million rand and the title of Soul Survivor. He has played a flawless game. Um, and I see a lot of his game in the way Vanna played. Very similar, but also very different. But also that control that they had over the game. But remember that Rob is only there because of Nicole. He's only there because of Nicole. There were a number of opportunities where people wanted to come for him. And Nicole and Doral both screwed those plans up. So Rob can be very thankful that he's still in the game because of Nicole. Right. Doral lost another fake idol. He didn't lose it. But more on that at the um, Tribal Council. Before I get into some of the questions that were asked before we started this... I have something to ask you, and LaRue is listening, so he's going to take this information and maybe perhaps use some of it at the finale, at the reunion show. My question to you is, who do you want to hear from at the reunion? Who are some of the people that you forgot about and had huge splash? Like, I forgot that Tanya was even in the show. Do you remember the, the craziness that was Tanya? I would love to hear from Tanya. So... If you want to hear from somebody, who do you want to hear from and what do you want to hear from them? Uh, you can leave those comments. Let's get to some of these now. Um, uh, Lara's asking, will there be a recap next or will this be the last one? I will do a recap after the finale, after my hangover. I've taken the Friday off. It's going to be an absolute party. I'm going to party like I should have done last year, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't get an opportunity. It kind of felt like a big blur. Although we did go to bed at like 5 a.m. after the after after party. Um, so there will be a recap, I promise. Um, Ms. Coco says, why did Nicole have to play Steffi like that? Because Steffi was a threat. Steffi was a threat to Nicole and Nicole had only <laughs> blinkers on for the end goal for Nicole. She's here for Nicole. So yeah, um, that's going to be interesting. Um, Jackie Phillips says, do you think that move by Nicole was a good one or would it jeopardize her game? I think Nicole is so focused. Rabbit, please don't kill the couch. Hey, 
Um, I think Nicole is so focused on Nicole's game that she doesn't think that she's done anything wrong. Steffi, on the other hand, is very sore from that move. Um, she has got all kinds of feelings. Um, Sheldon asked, please talk about Nicole's brilliant soliloquy that ensured no men on the jury would vote for her to win. Wow. Wasn't the timing of that soliloquy about men and women and uh, just really the timing of that in South African context? Remember, this happened like at the beginning of the year. <laughs> And the timing of that episode and that soliloquy specifically was like, ooh, ooh, whoa, whoa. It was pretty hectic, hey? Um, I'm going to get to some of your comments in a bit. Well, let's get through this. Um, Fadil, I think I've addressed that. Will there be a final three or a final two for the jury to choose from? Three people. Three people will be vying for votes from the 10-person jury. Um, if you had Letitia's null vote idol how would you play it at final four? I don't know. Who's going to win immunity? If I was Letitia, how would I play? I would probably nullify Rob's vote. I don't even know how that, how that works. Does it get played after the votes? Does it get played before the votes? I guess it gets played after the votes are read. Hi, Nico. Please can I nullify that third Letitia vote? I don't know, guys. I don't know, guys. It's going to be boss. I'm very excited for this episode. Can you tell? Um, Fadil asked another question. Do you think Rob is serious about not wanting the money or the title? No. I think he was drunk, yo. He was lit. <laughs> but I don't think he would be upset if Nicole wins. Um, how orcs is Steph's first time in the jury going to be? I can't wait for to see a Ponderosa. Oh my God, guys. I spoke to Dante and Jacques today and that Ponderosa video is going to be bananas. Um, so somebody I know did a long interview with her, um, on Friday and Steffi was inconsolable. She wanted to go straight back onto the island and fix things and find out what happened. So Steffi is in a world of pain. World. Like her mind and her life has just been bah, smashed. So it's going to be, that Ponderosa is going to be very awkward. It's going to be as crazy as the Jacques versus Steffi versus Nicole versus Rob situation. It's going to be as cold, as brutal as all of that guaranteed it is going to be flames ponderosa i probably that's probably going to be the most popular ponderosa video in the history of south african survivor guaranteed um for deal said should letitia have played her idol for steffi no letitia is out for letitia guys please she doesn't owe anything to anybody and i think letitia has as much chance to win against nicole as Ro and rob and durrell as she did against steffi i think she is very low on the um, jury's totem pole. Um, I don't think she should have played it for Steffi. Um, she played it for herself and that was 100% her right to do. Uh, playing your idol on somebody else, unless you have a whole bunch of numbers and a strategy about it, yeah. If you've got it, play it. Especially when other people are playing their idols. Rob playing an idol, Ofti's wearing an idol, Nicole doing her whole soliloquy, telling the whole story about the half idol, half idol, and then playing it. Of course, Letitia was going to play her idol. She would have been, I would have played that idol for myself in that moment with that whole idol train happening. 100% would have played it for myself. Oh my God, there's so many questions, guys. Um, can we anticipate a draw win? Um, Taryn in our comment section 100% thinks Durao is going to take this because of how random um, it is. Um, do you think Rob is safe? Um, is Afra's question. No, if he loses he's not safe. The only person who's safe in the next vote is the person wearing that necklace. Nobody's safe. Um, and who knows what is best for anybody in that situation. So uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see. Right, let's get to some of these comments. Um, holy shit, you people have a lot to say today. Um, right. Um, right, Sheldon says, 
Well, it's thanks Nicole and Dora that Rob was always safe. It's Rob's credit for maintaining control over them, 100%. Um, and that is a fine, fine thing that he did. Um, <laughs> Jacques says justice for Ting Ting. Nathan Leanne voted out first. You want to hear from those people? Um, justice for Ting Ting. Let's hear from Paul, whose lifelong dream it was to got to play. Man, Paul was um, speaking to Dante today. Dante had had three people in his sights to get to play hard against. He wanted to stick it to Paul from the moment he saw him. I'm not sure why. Like, what did Paul ever do to Dante um, that he had to gun for him? But he just, like, let me tell you, I've met Dante for the first time today. That guy is calls a spade a spade. But he clearly can read people very well. He called Rob and Nicole from day one. He was saying, these people, these two are, are fake people. Um, uh, he's got a lot of <laughs> things to say about Nicole and why he thought she was fake and how she was preaching about inner beauty and being original and, and a true woman, yet her eyebrows are fake and her boobs are fake. And he was not about that. He was like, for somebody to go on about how original and true you should be to yourself for somebody to be that fake on your outside he was like she's got a lot of demons and bat battles going internally and she can go dark which we've seen um but that's his opinion on her not mine um 5 a.m hike table mountain in ct yes 5 a.m it was a big jaw um can you interview castaways for a few weeks i can try um let's see if we can make that work Loudmouth says, I want to hear from Sipe. How did her game go from almost out first to in control, then blindsided? That is survivor for you, man. I also thought she was a goner. Um, I also agree. Give three people in the finals. I also agree. Um, I love to hear more from Jacques. His foreshadowing of the game was so good. Um, I actually said to Jacques before he left that um, when we are done with the show, that perhaps him and I will do a alive somehow um let me keep an eye on time everybody i started it late we're on 37 minutes so probably about 40 minutes um i can't wait for the ponderosa of steffi yep i want to hear from jacques M mike post watching how he trusted people and was totally under a spell i want to hear from tanya the female tom and we have to hear from Doral. i'd love to see a 550 final vote with nicole and Doral making a fire in the studio uh Can that happen? <laughs> I don't. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, it gets played before the vote. So as Nico said, let's go to the vote. Nico, I'd like to use this nullifier. Oh, so the person doesn't even get to vote. Okay. I 100% she's, think she's going to put it on, on Rob. She's been talking about the woman going forward and taking Rob out. Letitia, I think, is going to play it on Rob. So Rob doesn't get to vote. Nicole, it all depends on who gets immunity, guys. It's so interesting. Um, Steffi would be an awesome returning player. She has had so many skills to dominate the game again, but in a different way. Lord help me. If I ever had to play against Steffi, I would run a mile. I mean, I don't like to run. But I would try. I would maybe fast walk away. I wouldn't run. Um, I get Steffi's pain. She kind of got caught with a hand in the cookie jar. Steffi's inability to see where she messed up and how hypocritical she was in the game. I think now she's seeing it. That must be in a world of pain. Um, Tarana also said Tanya is the female Tom. 100%. If Letitia plays her idol for Steffi... Um, Letitia would have gone home with Rob's vote. Yeah, she had to play it for herself. Um, playing an idol for someone else sounds easier than it is. Say Jacques, he should know. I want to know if Dural thought he was as dumb as we thought he was. Also, I want to hear from Ting Ting and Nicole being so manipulative, her crying um so easily that she made up that lie about the tablets yeah man that's taryn's comment um that was a uh, was wow i think all of us were like wait a minute what just happened how did she turn on her tears so quickly that must be a skill a party trick hashtag narcissist um if it 
it's not your lifelong dream to play, you shouldn't be on the show. Ugh, you know what? Some people are just out there to be on holiday, hashtag Maba, um, and just want to sort of be get your 15 minutes of fame. What I can tell you is you're not going to be famous after this, unless you were famous going in. You're not famous after Survivor. Uh, people may recognize you, but you're not going to get work and influence and product placements, all that. So it's just not going to happen. Maybe if you have a million right. I don't know. Um, finally, watching your live. Yes, welcome, Laura. Laura Ladida actually joined us out in uh, the West Coast at Dante's Coffee Shop. So, Dante, what a gift this season. What an amazing character, guys. Can we just, can we just applaud to LaRue and his team of casting people because this episode's characters were great and the people were coming to play. They were not there, most of them. In fact, the whole jury, except maybe Maba, were there to play. They were coming guns blazing. I thought this, this season was hectic to watch. Like these players, I would have struggled against a lot of them. Um, the things that played out on that island, wow. I, I don't know how I would have taken it, especially that thing with Jacques. I said to him today, I'm like, I'm pretty sure. And he said that Sipe might have been the person who stood up and said, this is bullshit, you guys are, are behaving really badly. I really hope that I would have been that person to stand up and go, guys, what the hell is going on here? We can't do this. There is almost like an an unwritten rule in Survivor that you play hard, but you don't suspend your humanity. Like, this is a game, but it's human beings. Like, let's not... This is not something you would normally do in, in real life. Like, why would you do it on a game played by people? It's Like, let's just be good humans. And that's... I think we've seen a lot of stuff happen on this season that uh, maybe blurred the lines a little. Um... Will Rob win with the car curse? Hey, I don't know, man. <laughs> if he doesn't, let's just talk about that. If he doesn't win, who nobody wants to win a car for a month. Uh, hashtag narcissist. Um, let's hear from everyone this season at the reunion, even if it's something small. We don't have the time. And also, like, do you want to hear from people who win, like, nowhere in the game? Nah. Um, there's some people who we won't hear from. I promise you, we won't hear from some people. Um, I want to hear from Dante and how frustrating it must have been watching the loose change players ignore his warnings when he could tell what was up. And Jacques actually today mentioned that that was one of his big regrets was that he didn't pay attention and he didn't form the right alliances and relationships. Because this game is also not just about who you're aligned with. It's also about how well you're able to maintain relationships with people who you may not need at that moment. But Jacques said to me that in the moment where he needed Maba and, you know, Dante and the people who he had cast aside because he didn't take them seriously as players, when he needed them and they, he took that plan to them, they were not interested. And Mike, because he hadn't formed any relationships with them. So they were like, I mean, Jacques has said this, should we go with it? now? Nah, let's rather go with the safety of this big majority. So in that regard... The lesson is to be friendly with everybody. Try and form relationships with everybody because you might not know when you're going to need them. And that's what Jacques learned about that, uh, those loose change players. Um, Nicole's piercing line this episode to Rob, I want to see you shine. Man, did she play him. Oh my God, that was so cringy. I like literally went, what did she just say? Um... Wow. Isn't the next immunity challenge an endurance one? In that case, I think Nicole's winning immunity. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, one of those concentrating, long, um, endurance -y kind of focus challenges. If she doesn't have Biostrath in her life, I think Nicole's definitely got that one. I think she's proven a couple of times that those are where she is better than Rob, at least. Um, and Doral and Tish are nowhere. Um, Fadil says, yes, this uh, season was awesome. Well done to LaRue. Um, Eric, is the Micronesia final immunity? It's the... Yeah. Um, Sipe was out by the time of the Mother Jacker moment. Oh, yeah. You motherfucker joke. <laughs> is that what you call it? Yeah, she was out. But what I'm saying is in that moment, Sipe, I think, might have been the person who would have stood up for Jacques. 
um, she wasn't there, obviously, um, so she didn't get that opportunity. But I think everybody else sort of climbed on the bandwagon. But by everything everybody says about Tupé, to me, it says that probably she would have been the only one who might have stood up and said, ah, this has gone too far. We need to rein it in. Um, so many amazing moments and people, says Marius, the season for t uh, talking points. Tanya Dural losing his idol. Steffi running on the water. Um, the motherfucker moment. Justice for Ting Ting. Hashtag rental car cruise and Maba leaving with the idol. Um, lastly, I want to hear from Nat. Who the hell's Nat? Natalie? No? Uh, oh, Nathan. Got you. Um, lastly, I want to hear from Nathan, who thought he was strong, but actually just cried all season. Quibbers for the spice. Leanne for her Nicole worries, killing her game. I've heard that Leanne is very nervous about seeing Nicole at uh, the final Tribal Council and reunion show. That's amazing that Nicole has a kind of power over human beings still now, even after the game. Fascinating. Um, and then what else have we got here? I think that's it, everybody. Oh, geez, no, we still carry out. Yo, you people are lit today. Um, lots to talk about and looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be boss. And um, we've got a couple minutes left, guys. Um, I want to hear from Letitia, as I think she had five confessionals in the whole season. <laughs> Can the camera focus on Jeff every time Nicole answers a question at the reunion? Just one more time. Jeff, uh, Dante, Meryl. Meryl is like all about the hand gestures and stuff. She's That whole jury serves me life. Um, there's a still frame that Taryn sent me um, during the episode uh, where Dante's eye-rolling... Corbus is eye rolling. All of them are like, ugh, it's amazing. That episode for the jury alone was absolutely incredible. Um, I also vote for Cameron to focus on Jeff and Corbus at reunion. I'm here for the eye roll spice. Mother Jacker. I love it. Um, King Jeff to dominate the final tribal council with Seth. He is going to come out guns blazing. <sighs> yeah, guys, that final tribal council is going to be absolutely lit. I cannot um wait for it i was surprised that jocks loose lips and that's coming from a super fan um in regards to what loose lips about what hmm. anyway guys we've got a couple minutes left um i think let's talk about steffi going home that moment where she sees that nicole has come for her that moment of utter disbelief must have been hectic. Um, I think when she walked off, she was broken. Um, I think she wanted to go straight back into the game. I think they had to really, really, with kit gloves, deal with, with Steffi after she lost. Um, oh, right. Um, you know what? Jacques, talking about Jacques and Loose Lips, he had to give people some information at some points during the episodes to make them try and trust him. Remember, he had nothing. He had nothing, nobody to rely on. Jacques was playing a lot for a long time by himself. Um, so he had to use whatever currency he has. And in Survivor, currency is information. And he had to buy some love some kind of support from people with the information that he had so he had to use what he had and at the moment all he had was information remember there were like five votes in a row where they were coming for Jacques at some point he was going to run out of rope so he had to sort of wave the um the idle advantage that he got he had to do whatever he could but as he mentioned there he'll chat about that in the post podcast that he'll do with uh, rob has a podcast if you don't know what that is go and google rob has a google go and google rob has a podcast and look for the survivor south africa podcast if you have two hours of your day go and listen to that it's fascinating listen to massive fans chat about our little survivor south africa and it's incredible what they say about this show so yeah um if i had to pick three moments from this season that were pivotal what would they be cpa being voted out um I think actually the first vote out of Leanne sort of solidified that solar tribe 
quite well. Um, that was a big moment for me. I think Jacques finding the hidden immunity idol that was Quibus's was quite pivotal. Um, Mother not playing her idol, that could have been a huge game changer, although Rob had his, and that would have come to play. Um, yeah, there have been so many that I lose track of what's, had, what's happened, even though I chat about it for so long. Um, Melissa saying, Jean, the recaps are so great. Excited to see what you have on the next Survivor Journey. Yeah, let's see what happens. Um, Marius, is that the third time Lucky is entering? I don't know if there's going to be another Survivor, guys. That is a question you need to ask at Mnet. Do that. Put that on Twitter. Put that on Instagram and ask if there's going to be another season. We don't know yet. Um, Jacques was voted as the weakest in the tribe, but ended up as the last remaining person out of his tribe. Some for Letitia, potentially. Um, same for Letitia, potentially. Yeah, he did very well, compare, comp um, thinking of where he was and where he started off. I will say this, and I've said it many times, to be underestimated in Survivor is actually really powerful. Because people constantly think that they can get to you at another point. And the longer you're in the game, the more momentum you've got, and the stronger your bonds form, you want to be underestimated. Going in buff, big, strong, Rob, although it's done very well for him, but Rocco, Nathan, these big, strong people, often is a disadvantage. Rob plus beer equals Jean plus wine. <laughs> maybe the podcast is really great guys get on it um taryn says nicole telling Steffi she betrayed the amigos was crazy after she was just with the girls that whole thing was mind-blowing so it's there's just been drama after drama on this season and it's absolutely incredible um yes graham jenica says that would be great cheers to google we need another season actually two seasons a year we're gonna win with an emmy this season hey imagine <sighs> okay guys let's wrap this up we've got a couple minutes left any last comments those people coming to the um to the finale we will see you there come and find me let's have a f pick uh we will have a drink this is funny from somebody who doesn't actually drink that much i don't often drink because i'm always driving and i will never drink and drive but i'm staying in town so we're going to get lit. I'm making up for last year where I didn't get lit that much. Um, also, I'm a messy drunk. Oh, well, not my problem. Um, Fadil says, you're so great. Thanks for this. You're welcome. Laura, I'll see you on Thursday. See you at the finale, Sheldon. You're also coming. That's awesome. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in every week. Um, if you have any questions or comments, pop them in my inbox. Um, the whole jury is here. I know. It's amazing. Um, Fadil says have the best time at the live show so jealous see you all at the finale yes yes Jeffrey we'll see you there um, I've had a great time hanging out with two of the survivors today it uh, was I've spoken a lot about survivor I need to not speak about survivor for at least another couple hours it's gonna be crazy Hannah says we are gonna miss you um, getting lit with you until 5 a.m. yep Marius Let's do it. Everybody, thank you very much. If you missed the beginning part of this, go onto my YouTube, catch the full thing there. And please remember to subscribe. If I don't have a lot of followers, I can't do anything on the channel. It's really crap. Um, but thank you very much for all of your support and your questions. This whole thing gets lit, more lit every episode, just like Survivor. Let's, let's look forward to the next episode. It is going to be fireballs. I cannot wait. Um, it's a... Uh, it's an incredible season and we've had lots of ups and downs and drama. Everybody, good night. Stay safe. I will uh, speak to you next week. Enjoy Thursday. We'll chat to you on Sunday around 7.30, probably around that time, uh, but late today, but I was up the West Coast. Bye. <laughs>